Hello, my name is Farish, and I'm a California-based developer. And in this video, we're going to cover how to build a portfolio. But before I get started, I'm going to take a moment to go over why a portfolio is valuable to have. And you may be asking yourself, why have a portfolio? Let me give you a few reasons why a portfolio is valuable. Prospective employers or clients want to see your current body of work. Just saying, trust me, I can do this isn't enough. You're asking them to take a leap of faith without showing them you even know how to jump. Secondly, a portfolio brings credibility because it showcases your work. You are proving what you are capable of by taking your code and turning it into completed projects. Lastly, this also has the benefit of being an online resume. Consider this to be a marketing tool. When a person visually sees what you have accomplished, that makes a greater impact than just reading about your skills through a resume. Do make sure to put in your contact information, social media, and specialized skills. Let's treat the portfolio like a set of stairs. As a beginner, you may be concerned with where you should start. So at the bottom step, I'm gonna recommend Code Academy projects. They're already available for you to use. And as you put them in your portfolio, it shows your commitment to learning. If you're unsure on what projects to choose, just pick ones that catch your interests in your specific path or any of them in the catalog. Now, after you've done that, we're gonna head to the next step, which is to build a project on your own. Try to pick something you're interested in. And if you're not sure what you're interested in, one thing I would recommend is to go to Google, look at local businesses, take a look at their websites, and maybe redesign them. I'm gonna do a quick overview on the redesign process. First, come up with a plan. This site is outdated. What modern look could I use to give the site a fresh design? If I'm not sure, I'm gonna look at comparable businesses, any site that looks new and well-built. I'm gonna see what elements of that site I could fit in the theme of the business I'm redesigning. I'm also gonna make sure to write this information down. The worst thing that can happen is I find some inspiration, but because I didn't write it down, I forgot where I saw it. Second, I'm gonna start with wireframing. Consider wireframes to be outlines of your website. They don't need to be perfect. They're just general guidelines. Don't be afraid to make changes because of something that you end up not liking later on. Lastly, don't be afraid to experiment or make mistakes. Play around with colors, positioning, CSS tricks, and whatever else you may like to try. This is all part of the learning process. Remember the long-term goal here is improvement, not perfection. After you built your project on your own, you may be wondering what to do next. The answer is to keep building. And I wanna explain this further. Even though there is no fixed number, having two to three projects that you have built on your own is a good starting point. Part of the value in doing your portfolio is to show improvement and growth with your skill set. Maybe after doing two to three projects, you're having trouble with finding inspiration on project ideas. A good alternative is to add features to your existing projects. Keep building can also mean keep iterating. Your first site could be built on HTML and CSS. Then you're feeling uninspired to build a second site. Take advantage of this site and add some vanilla JavaScript to this to expand your skill set. Then your next site may have all the features of this first site. Expand your skill set again by adding a framework like React. Now, lastly, you can take your React app, move it to the next level by building a backend using Node.js. Whether it is through making new projects or adding to your existing ones, the goal is to keep building. So what happens when you reach the top of the stairs? Well, that leads to the step of cleaning up. And what I mean by that is we're going to clean up your portfolio, remove older projects that no longer reflect your skill level. If you have too many projects, your portfolio can be overwhelming. Plus, you may not want to showcase that project you did four or five years ago. There's nothing wrong with taking some time and refactoring your portfolio and making it more up to date and relevant with today's technology. Now, what if you aren't doing front end? Do you see still need a portfolio? Well, if you're doing Python, data science, or machine learning, the earlier reasons to have a portfolio still apply. You still want your completed code online, and you want to make sure to include detailed instructions on how the program works and what is the expected output. And I might want to recommend doing step-by-step write-ups with Juniper Notebooks especially since you can share them with GitHub. If any of this has you concerned or scared, please don't stress out. This is all taught on the Code Academy platform. So now we need to discuss where we're gonna host our portfolio. Now, the first option is standard web hosting. 
also known as shared web hosting. This is great for front end websites, but it has many limitations. You only get a small slice of the server resources. Plus there's very limited backend support. For example, my shared hosting only supports Node 1.0. The current version of Node is version 11. In return for these limitations, usually shared hosting is the lowest cost, and it is perfectly fine for hosting websites built on HTML, CSS, vanilla JavaScript, and jQuery. Now, the next type of web hosting is a VPS, which stands for a virtual private server. And what is being done here is you're renting out a small part of the server to get a bigger slice of resources. This this gives you more power than traditional web hosting. You can host front-end and back-end applications. The drawback is there is some configuration involved and some deployment knowledge that is needed. Some major players of VPS services are DigitalOcean, Microsoft Azure, and Amazon Web Services. And the last type of hosting is dedicated. And dedicated is renting a full server. You aren't sharing any part of it. As you can imagine, this runs at a higher cost and requires a high level of deployment knowledge. Now we've just gone over a lot of hosting information and I'm not gonna recommend any of it to start out with. We're gonna take a different direction, but I wanted you to have the knowledge of what your options are. Now, what I'm actually gonna recommend is GitHub and GitHub should already be used to host your code. Now. Don't let that statement stress you out. This is depending on where you are for your development path. And if you haven't got into that part of the path yet, just be aware it is part of Code Academy's curriculum. The great thing about already having your code up on GitHub is you can convert your front end code into a GitHub page. And this is an additional free service for using GitHub, so you don't have to worry about any out-of-pocket cost. For Python and other related languages, store your completed project code on GitHub. As I mentioned earlier, make Make sure to include instructions on how to use your code and the expected output from your program. A great place to put this information would be in the readme file of your repository. Along with our GitHub courses, Code Academy offers an additional course and article on how to deploy your code into a GitHub page. Now, the last reason why I recommend GitHub is that almost every major tech company uses Git. This makes you more hireable. You are putting your portfolio on a platform where many companies are already familiar with. By doing this, you've created an additional marketable skill. Why not take advantage of this platform and increase your skill set to add to your portfolio? We've reached the end of our video. Let's do a quick recap of what was discussed. First, we talked about why you should have a portfolio. A portfolio helps your marketability, whether it is to be hired by an employer or a client as a freelancer. Second, we talked about what to put in your portfolio. I gave the analogy of climbing the stairs. To help you, I gave a suggested starting point and discuss what to do when you got to the top. What you do in the middle is up to you. Lastly, we talked about hosting. I went over different hosting options and in the end, I recommended GitHub. I did so with the goal of marketability in mind while hoping to direct you to another skill set that is commonly expected to have from prospective employers. Thanks for watching. This is Farish from Code Academy. Now, if you'd like to join the conversation, either subscribe to this channel or leave a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning at Code Academy today.